Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays. We got Perp Yoshi on tap. Level five. Do a couple today. Hop hop, donut lifts. Okay, so this one looks like it's a bit of an auto scroller. They're very dangerous donut lifts. Yeah. So these are the same kind of donut blocks that you would see in um, in Super Mario World. So kind of the same con concept of pastry insanity. Oh, oh no. Okay. All right. Great start. That is how you begin a mission. Coming in hot. So note to self, uh, don't do that. What's interesting about playing these games is that, uh, you know, usually I play these in advance and not like in advance, it's like pre-playing, but like I record these well before I'm actually going to show them to everybody. Like I don't record these on like a Sunday morning. I definitely don't have the time or energy for that. Ain't nobody got, I mean, some people might have time for that. I don't. Sundays are the day we get our sleep in. If you've ever heard Welcome to Elena, you'd understand what that means. After spending all weekend at the club, yeah, so I like to reflect on the fact that, I mean, beyond the fact that I'm terrible at these games, um, that you're getting a very raw experience from me, kind of raw dog these levels a little bit, and I don't know, I think it makes them kind of fun, because I don't really know what I'm doing, and I think the authenticity is interesting. Also, um, going further with that, I've, I've found a new method of recording, which is really nice and gives me a little bit more flexibility to not have to do a, a post-game, post-commentary, not post-game, post-commentary setup, which has been really nice. So you're seeing that now. I'm actually doing this completely live in front of a studio audience. So you're welcome for that. All right. So that looks like a checkpoint. Let's go ahead and grab that. I said it looks like a checkpoint, like there's anything else in the game that looks like that. There is not. Yeah, this level's pretty fun. It's it's your first auto-scroller, I believe, in the game. And I don't know if there's more, because I've never played any further than this. So, we're doing great. Oh yeah, sniped him. <laughs> that shy guy's got a bit of a wig on, I think that's great. I love fancy dudes. Whatever makes you. Look and feel your best. Here at Deep Mike Industries, we are an endorser of haircut and culture. So if you got a fancy do, live it up. All right, so this could be danger. Oh, I don't know if I can get it. Maybe if I shoot it. Oh yeah. Okay, that was that was MLG Pro move. That was epic. I'm gonna leave that red coin there just to assert dominance and hop into the bonus circle. Let's see what we get. I don't know if there's actually any good way to really do this where... Okay, so that whatever I just did was not. I don't know if there's a good way to do this where you hop into the circle at a certain point and... Oh, I would have got 100% had I... Not been so epic. That's okay. 99 is pretty good. I got 99 problems and a red coin is one. So no bonus for us. That's okay. We will be thrown onto the back of Poop Yoshi. And it looks like there are shy guys on stilts here in this little image. Now I will tell you in advance, this is something I've been thinking about and waffling over, is that coming up, in order to get the ability to play the final bonus stages of the world that you're in, you have to get 100%. I'm gonna go ahead and say full disclosure, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to get 100% on all these levels. Not because I don't care about you guys, but just because that would, oh, okay. That would just require a lot of replaying and I'm not good enough at this game to do that without a lot of headache. So I'm just gonna go ahead and admit that I might be taking some less than savory ways of unlocking those stages. So just bear with me. I just wanna show everything, but I, uh, I'm just not gonna lie about it and pretend like I just went back and replayed it. I'm not going to, so just a heads up. So this says yellow eggs create coins, red eggs create two stars, flashing eggs, hit an enemy to receive these prizes. So a little tutorial. 
That's cool. So it does exactly as it says on the can. We got a glowing egg. Turns into a red coin. Oh. Well, I thought that's what that said. Whatever. We're three for three. It just gave us a red coin, so... Yeah, what a fun and exciting tutorial, right? Great. I just love when the game just comes right out and tells you. This kind of feels like something you would expect out of like a game nowadays. Where a lot of games, the casual audience for games, I mean, in, in fairness, like the hardcore, hardcore audience for games has expanded as well. Like more people are playing games than ever just because there's more people being introduced to them and more people attempting them. But it just seems like, you know, in general, games nowadays are a little bit more handholdy. Whereas, you know, previously, you might have had to figure stuff out. That sounds very much like a back in my day thing to say. I don't think there's anything wrong with the way that games are doing it. I just, I'm just making an observation. Uh, so get off my back, okay? Thanks. This level seems like it's a little bit of a, kind of a, a maze cave. A hazy maze cave. I'm not entirely sure where I'm supposed to be going here, but we'll figure it out, as we always do. I say that like that's what always ha I mean, it it does technically happen, as in I always do figure stuff out, but that's, you know, you're usually seeing the, the finished dish. You're not seeing me cook it, usually. But I try not to, I try not to go back and, like, cheese this stuff by looking stuff up or, you know, using hacks. I'm trying not to be so much of a elite hacksaw anymore. So we got this really nice little elevator here. Okay, and it's gone forever. It was fun while we knew you. And yeah, these, uh, I just kind of want to look at these guys for a minute. So I love the fact that they have shy guys on stilts that are wearing shoes that match the color of their cloak. I think that's wonderful. And if you don't think that's wonderful, you're wrong. Just a heads up. All right, so there's a bit of a halfway point. Oop. And I think that these, I don't know. I don't want these shy guys to be up my biz. Can I crush them from here? Oh, you betcha. I don't know if I can shoot the flower from below. No, I cannot. At least it lets me recoup my egg. I'm not entirely sure what, what I could do about that. Unless I like jump up and then shoot down, but I don't know if I want to do that. It seems like effort. Unless I can do that. Nope. Because I don't know, there's probably really cool, fancy, funky, fresh ways to shoot the eggs and, you know, use all kinds of cool techniques and whatnot, but I don't know any of them. So that's just a, uh, that's a fun fact for you. D-Mike does not know any sneaky tricks yet. But hey, there's always... There's always time to improve. Life is all about constantly being educated and improving, I think. Okay. So we take this sneaky ground butthole. Ooh, this is fun. I remember this, I've seen this. Okay. Morph into the mole tank here. Dig like mad to find two red coins. Okay. So we will be getting the, this is the second opportunity for Yoshi to turn into a vehicle. I don't entirely know where that came from, because it's not present in Super Mario World in any way. But it's in this game, where Yoshi turns into, as far as we've seen, a helicopter. And now this is going to be like a little, kind of a, a claw digging tank thing. But that's not present in the, uh, in Super Mario World in any way. So I don't know, kind of like, in the lore, where this comes from. Like, why Yoshi has magical powers. But yeah. So we gotta kind of hurry. I don't remember this giving you a lot of time from what I've seen from other people, but... You have to kind of dig around. You're trying to get the two red coins. That was fun. And it looks like we found one already, so we're going to go back. I would hazard a guess that the other one is probably here-ish. Yes, we got it. And then we have to dig down to the... Okay. So yeah, you get one shot at that, and then that's it. But we got it. We got both red coins. Not that it matters, because perfection is per perfectionist, and here at D-Mike Industries, we like to pride ourselves on the... Humility that comes with imperfection. So, no worries. Don't sweat it, everybody. Or you can. I mean, if it gives you anxiety, I apologize, but... I'm about as imperfect as imperfect can be. Pound the ground. Wow. Okay. 
So we are learning about things that we have been instructed on much earlier, unless that was the first time that we learned about ground pounding, but I don't think that it was. One of the oops, one of the things that I think is interesting about this game is that there's no time limit to complete these levels, which is gives you time to explore. So that does kind of provide a bit of a a bit of a different style, you know, with like Super Mario World having more, being more akin to the original Super Mario Brothers for the regular Nintendo or the NES, as we like to say here in the biz. That was epic. I know that was the way that you're supposed to. Oop. Nope. No. Nope, not getting those stars. Anyway. I think it's interesting that the style of this game is so different where, you know, they had kind of a, I guess, template that they went with of how to make a successful Mario game. And how do I know that? Well, Super Mario, Th Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario 3, I mean, maybe to a lesser extent, Mario 2 or like Mario USA, however, whichever you, way you like to think of that. Um, those games were successful and they made tons of... I would, assume, I would assume like an expansion of the fan base by just making those games like they're wildly popular. And so, you know, they kind of went rogue with that a little bit in the same way that you think of like maybe like your, uh, is there something up there? No, those are just clouds. In the same way that I like to think of um, like Zelda 2, like, you know, Zelda 1, huge success. Then, all right, bonus. Zelda 2, a little different. Worth it being like, worth it. With it being the side-scrolling one, and the attack styles were all different. Oh, we nailed that one. What a great episode. You guys, now you did see perfection, so if you do have anxiety about that, I don't want to hear it. Because I did this just for you guys. I'm taking care of everyone's mental health. You're welcome. But yeah, this one definitely went off the grid a little bit. It was wildly different, which I think is great. I think that it's always cool when you have something that you try that's new. And I don't know if Yoshi's Island is as beloved as like Super Mario World or Super Mario 3, because I haven't played any more than just this. But, you know, it's already endearing itself to me. I think it's very charming and I like it. So why not? So here we go. We are going to do the scratch off bonus, which I think we have. I think we've seen this. Oh, I got 15 lives. Wow. I'm killing it. So, yeah. Okay, so oh, not scratch off. This is the throw eggs and don't get came act. Oh, great. So that was awesome. That is exactly how you don't do a bonus. You're welcome. All right. So we've got two levels that we'll be doing next time. Some of them, I think these next two are, I don't know if it's the infamous ones that everybody knows or if that's going to be in the episode after this. But like I said, those two final missions, we'll tackle those in a different way once I finish seven and eight, which will happen next time. So thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Yoshi's Island on Super Nintendo Sundays, and I'll see you next time. Bye.